talk about Jake Peets and DJ Mangus as well. Whereas, look, if you're into LSU football talk to a very nerdy level, um, like very deep conversation, I, I would once again direct you to the Hold That Podcast podcast that I do with Brody Miller, who writes for The Athletic. We recorded a new episode yesterday in which we talked a lot about the Pete's Mangus Obedee Pressers, as well as what Coach O had to say about defensive coordinator and the search and really what it means for, I think, what you w- experienced last year with Bo Pelini. So we'll get to the defensive coordinator and Coach O part maybe next, so I'm going to play some of that audio. But first, I want to talk about Pete's and Mangus because I really loved what I heard out of Jake Pete's from a philosophical standpoint yesterday. Um, and it's because it all started with player trust, right? The answer where he's talking about football is not the focus right now. The focus is getting to know these players. It's establishing a relationship with these players so that they respond to you so that they trust you. And like he said, he wants to feel comfortable. He wants his players to feel comfortable with coming over to his home. He wants his players to know his wife, his six children, which by the way, Bless that woman and bless that family. I think they've been like seven different stops in the last nine years. And uh, Jake, very fertile, married in 2012, six kids, maybe pump the brakes a little bit. That's that's Philip Rivers type of numbers there. I mean, this thing, you're going to end up on a reality television show if you're not careful. But the point being is that this is a man who wants them to feel comfortable, his players feel comfortable coming to his home, coming to that environment, and that player trust. And I don't just mean trust on off the field, right? Or excuse me, I, I, I mean trust on the field as well. And a lot of times they go hand in hand. But when you establish that trust on the field, then you get the scheme input and you establish the trust on the, or excuse me, you establish it off the field, then the scheme comes in. And if you have success there, it helps you to establish trust on the field. And ultimately, that's all you want as a player. It's all you want. It's all you're looking for. Is if I listen to my coach and I do exactly what he's telling me, even if I don't like it, can I trust that he's putting me in the best position to succeed for my team and for my career? And it sounds like Pete understands that from a philosophical standpoint. That's not to say he's going to be able to pull it off, right? And that's really this entire hire. I can't pretend to know whether or not everything he said will come true, whether or not he can execute on these ideas, but I like the core ideas. The same way that I like the kind of guiding philosophy of LSU in searching out these offensive minds, where they specifically wanted to put their thumb on the scale to go a bit younger. We kept using the Bain analogy. These guys grew up in the spread. They were molded by it. Coach O got dangerously close to, to using the Bain analogy yesterday when explaining what they were looking for. And also acknowledging that as great as Coach Ensminger was and has been these last few years, that it is just something different when you have to adopt these modern concepts versus when you're kind of at the forefront of them. Now, that is not any sort of disparagement of tarnishment of what Steve Ensminger did, because if you just look at the raw numbers, Steve Ensminger is one of, if not the greatest LSU offensive coordinator ever. So he deserves a ton of credit, but it was time for a change. And I like philosophically the change that they made. I love what Jake Peets had to say yesterday. And you could kind of get that. I I, I got a very sincere feel from Jake Peets. Did y'all get that? Like a man who he knows the value of this opportunity, right? Uh, When you hired Linehan, what was this but another box to be checked on his resume? He's been an NFL head coach before. It is what it is. Pass the game for college. Sure. Go make some money. Sure. You know, you're, you've had a big time school. That's all well and good. But it didn't mean anything. This means everything to Jake Peets. He's been grinding for this opportunity his entire life. He's learned from some of the greatest offensive minds his entire working life in order to get here. Remember, this is the man who got his first coaching job by literally walking onto a practice field and addressing the head coach out of nowhere and just saying, you should hire me. And then... A few days later, all of a sudden, he's the strength and conditioning coordinator. He's a special teams coach. I mean, this is a guy who has grinded for this opportunity. As we said, NFL stops all throughout the way. And through that, he's he's gained a lot of invaluable resources that maybe somebody like DJ Mangus doesn't have. And that's why these two complement each other so well. Pete's has been in all different environments. He's worked with different position groups. He's worked with all different types of people. So he has the ability to communicate with people from all sorts of different backgrounds all different parts of the country, all different age ranges. 
and we're talking about college coaching, communication, especially communication of responsibility, is maybe, uh, you know, along with, like, you want to establish that trust first, and then you want to make sure that your players know what you're trusting them to do. It's one of the most, if not the most important factor. It's why I love the answer yesterday that you played earlier in the show, Musso, about, you know, he had some conversations with Joe Brady last year where maybe sometimes Joe helped him take advanced algebra down to algebra one. So so the 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 kind of core theory remains complex and it looks complex to the opponent. But you are, but you simplify it for your team so that your guys get it and they can play fast. It's easy to say, hard to do. It sounds like Pete's learned a lot of that from Brady. And that's, I think, where DJ Mangus comes in. And that's where the tag team factor comes in. Pete's knows how to put this theory into action, I think. And when you look at Mangus, although he has been a play caller and an offensive coordinator before, um, I think that he's just a little more green when it comes to dealing with all these different rooms, all these different backgrounds, dealing with all these different people. And so you kind of have the Wunderkin uh, idea with Mangus, the guy who's at the four of offensive theory, and then you combine him with Pete's, which allows him to enact that offensive theory and put it into place and get the players to understand it, and all of a sudden you got a pretty deadly combination there. And in Pete's, you could have a guy who's here to stay. Like we said, he recognizes the value of this opportunity. He wants to be here. Yesterday in that press conference, I got the feeling that this was a guy who recognized this is his big break. This is what his career has been pushing for. This is what he has been working for. And so he's going to make the most of it. He's going to leave quite literally everything out there on the field, in the locker room. It's like he said, man, you want to talk about these coaches being workaholics. He spent, despite having six kids, he spent more time with Joe Brady last year probably than even his wife. And so you can believe that he's not going to let this opportunity go without doing everything he can to have success. And then maybe if we just really want to get excited and extrapolate and talk about, you know, maybe even be a bit naive in our optimism and look forward to what the most golden scenario could be, if he ends up being really good, he could be your answer for a while. This could be a Venables type of situation, potentially where you have a guy who's been all over the place, traveled so much that maybe he wants to root down for a little bit, have some semblance of consistency in his life. And 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 if he has success in Baton Rouge, it looks like that could potentially be the answer. Other things that I love that Pete's talked about, he, lo- he talked about customizing the offense to his personnel. And of course, that is something that would seem so obvious, yet there are still coaches that don't feel that way. And it's a bit of an old school coach mentality versus a new school coach mentality. And you definitely saw it with Bo Pelini last year. Bo Pelini represents the old school where it was my way or the highway. In my opinion, Pete's and Mangus, they represent the new uh, theory of coaching, right? Which is customizing to what your environment is giving you. The analogy that I go to Uh, It's like, let's say you're building roads in the past. Some people, they'll build a road straight no matter what, right? They don't care what obstacles are in their way. Uh, Environment be damned. We're going to dam up this river. We're going to make bridges. We're going to tunnel directly through this mountain. And and that is what it is. But then other coaches or other uh, architects, other designers, they're going to work with their environment, right? A little more environmentally friendly. They're going to build the curves of the road around the mountain. They're going to build the building around that beautiful oak tree so that nature and and like what you have naturally and what you're trying to build, that it works in concert together. And it sounds like that's what Pete wants to do offensively. Not being married to a system, have a system that's dynamic enough where you can tweak and change things in order to maximize the success of your personnel. And so when he's talking about personnel groupings, that's why he's saying, look, I'm not married to anything. And that was the strength of Joe Brady. Remember, at the beginning of 2019, who thought that Clyde Edwards-Alaire would be the every down back? That was something that developed naturally, right? LSU just staying in that 11 personnel with the Fab Five of uh, Clyde, Thad Moss, Justin Jefferson, uh, Jamar Chase, and who else am I blanking on here? Or was that it? And, 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 and whatever. The, the point being, like that that personnel group, that eleven personnel group, would ended up dominating twenty nineteen. They kind of found that along the way, and so it sounds like Pete and Mangus, they're going to find their own system, their own groupings of what really works for this team along the way. So I know it's just a press conference, and I'm probably making way too much of it. 
but just in terms of press conferences go and and in terms of trying to understand the philosophical approach of a coach, I really love what I saw out of Jake Peets yesterday. And I think that him and Mangus can be a very effective tag team in terms of supporting each other's strengths and minimizing each other's weaknesses. Uh, all right, when we get back, uh, continue to break down, uh, maybe talk a little NFL playoffs. i got some Pelicans to get to as well. Keep it locked right here on OTBOT.